the yellow jacket fires underground, there are still remains of miners that were never brought out. The only way that they could stop the fires burning in the shafts was to seal them off. There was at least 35 miners that died in this. I think that they are still here. This is unlike any cemetery I think I've ever seen. There are over 35 bodies, 800 feet in the ground, right here. The first night here, I wasn't protected from getting attacked. I just wanted to... As I got to where there's no more light, my headlights started to flicker. I had to fight to control my vehicle. Something was trying to pull my car off the road. I experienced possession. I mean, this place is really evil. If you're a demon, if you're demonic, if you're evil, speak with us. A legion, a legion of demons. Or... Oh my God. That 100% came from behind us over there. Oh, look at this. Dude. You have to make a loud bang. I feel like there's somebody to my right. Oh, dude. What the? What's that? Oh, what was that? No, no, dude, 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 of the land that we're sitting on right now, you'll come to find that there are over 35 bodies, 800 feet in the ground, right here. And this was once the entrance to the mine shaft where those bodies are located. Tonight on the Paranormal Files, we have a very personal, a very interesting, and a very dark story that is unfolding as we speak. I want to, once again, 100% remind you guys online that what you're watching is real and that there is a potential for this energy that we're connecting with, this demonic energy at times, if you choose to believe in that, to come through your screen into your home, whether you're watching on your phone, your TV, your laptop, there is a potential, we've seen it hurt people in the past, for the videos to affect the viewer. So, viewer discretion is advised, and uh, welcome to The Paranormal Files. So here are some wild horses just coming up to our location. <laughs> Not often you see that on a paranormal investigation. Those are legit wild horses, people. Look at that. It's got a baby too. Do you hear that steam train in the back? This is like the most wild west video we've ever done, like in the desert area, in Nevada, old gold mine, wild horses, and a steam train. Like, what are we gonna have, like a guy in a gunslinging outfit come through soon? Uh, <laughs> 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 fucking trains, people, fucking trains. We haven't even started, we just got here. Dude, what the hell, man? Now, I know that I always make this joke, and I'm always telling you guys, it's always a train, but like, I feel like this is even an upgrade of the joke because we have a steam train with the with the whistle. Oh, here it comes. Oh. Uh, can you Do you hear that? There's a, I mean, <laughs> up in the mountains, you'd think that there'd be a train up here. You know, I'm like, I would never think that, right? You told them about the wild horses yeah. that all came into town. That's wow. crazy. This is look at, look at, there's the train right there. there it is. You can actually see the train. Never before have we actually seen the train on the show. 
Oh shit, guys, this is a paranormal files first. <laughs> there it is. Wow, look at that. There's the train. Can you imagine that being up on the side of a mountain? That is crazy, man. Looks like a like a toy train. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, oh no. Oh. Oh, that and is the horses are. He's got a special show. They're oh, humping. No. <laughs> they got horses humping well, and a train. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. I don't wow. Know. I'm, I'm sorry. definitely going to have to I'm censor sure that on YouTube. Is going to, yeah, ban <laughs> but look, there's this. the train, everybody. We got a train. Oh, I actually just saw a guy up there. There's a guy up on the train standing there. Well, of course, there'd be somebody there. Yeah, right, exactly. Damn, even the horses are staring at the train. <laughs> yeah. Wow, dude, that was a Another crazy that was there. a crazy moment right there. Okay, so we're gonna start the interview now. I have no food. I gave it to the donkeys. Sorry. Oh shit. Okay. Oh. It's like about to be a horse attack caught on camera. You know, hey, Jesus. Like he, they're staring right at me. You know? No. Yeah, if, if, if Jeff, you can take one for the team for those views. Oh, don't, oh the baby's don't have coming. The baby come over by. Oh, fuck. Okay. All right. Okay, so are we ready? We're yes. ready. Hi, I'm Cassie Oswald and I am the property manager for the Haunted Crown Point Mill here in Virginia City, Nevada. Our building was built in 1935 by the Sutro Tunnel Coalition. It ran for seven years beginning in January of 1936. The Crown Point Mill processed some 300,000 tons of ore until the government forced it to shut down under the War Production Board Limitation war Order otherwise known as the L-208 in 1942. The building framework is steel, including the roof trusses. The walls are one by 12 wood sheets covered by galvanized iron. The mill also contains a series of steel agitation tanks. All the tanks are supported by footings and timbers of various sizes. My research in this building indicates that the paranormal activity doesn't actually result from the structure itself, but of a disaster that occurred in 1869. Um, which was the Yellow Jacket fires. Now we're gonna head straight up to the top because we're losing daylight and I'd like to show you all the structure that we have at the top. Okay. Is that okay? Let's grab our stuff Perfect. and go. He fed them, which was probably why yeah. This is the first time I've been here where I've seen them first. actually come on the property. I've seen them around and around town, but he doesn't. Now I know why they come. Yeah, it's not aggressive at all. It's just yeah. I was looking at it for food. Me, I just I, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I'm ready. Roll. Let's roll. Yep. Up we go. Yeah, we do have rooms. This looks like a haunted house. <laughs> yeah. Well, it kind of is. Is the floor all intact? <laughs> yes. Anything that's unsafe, we have cordoned off. Yeah. Look at these vats. Go down wow. the bridge. You know, I'm going to leave my backpack right here. Grab later. So the owner, when he got this place, he actually emptied out a couple of these. And I want to say he ended up with, I think it was around $200,000 worth of gold and silver. What? Yeah. I wow. Think. I remember when this place was shut down, it was shut down. It never ran again. So it was left with unprocessed stuff. <laughs> wow. Now that is just crazy. Like this thing is massive, you know? 
Watch your step out here. We've got This structure here, that would have been like the manager's foreman's building up at the very top. And then the rest of this, the shaft goes into the ground and they would bring up ore and all the processing stuff and they'd bring it up through this and into the mill and run it through the mill to process the gold and silver. So this was actually how they brought the ore up from the ground in 1942. So the Yellow Jacket fires, that occurred. The crown point shaft was located so here. <laughs> this is the building. <laughs> so this is the building. We're about here. The original crown point shaft would have been located here. And where we're at? We would be here. Right there, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that would be where the opening of the crown point shaft was where uh, the Bickle brothers, well, one of them died and then the other one shortly after. So it was at this point here where underground, about 800 to 1,000 feet, there are still remains of miners that were never brought out. The only way that they could stop the fires burning in the shafts was to seal them off. It took over three months for them to recover anything and ultimately they had to give up and leave bodies down there because cutting off any oxygen to the tunnels was the only way to stop the fires so how what can you just briefly explain that incident one of the things that the miners were more afraid of than anything working down there in that time period was fire because it could produce agonizing suffocation rather than an instant death of an explosion or falling. You know, instant death is better than suffocating death, right? Mm -hmm. So on the 7th of April, at the 800 foot level of the Yellow Jacket Mine in Gold Hill, um, there was, they, they don't know how the fire started. They, they don't. So in those days they had candles down there. So what probably happened is that a candle got tipped over, caught fire. Subsequent speculation theorized that an abandoned burning candle set the disaster in motion. The specifics about the consequences of the fire are better understood. Um, whatever the cause, the fire worked its way unnoticed for quite a while and it occurred during the early morning hours when the graveyard shift was finishing its work. Since there were fewer miners during the late night shift, not as many lives were at risk as would have been the case during the middle of the day, but there was no one around to notice or extinguish the fire as it progressed. So the flames devoured wood and oxygen, creating a large pocket of smoke-filled air. The timbers held on until the, shaft cha the shift change when at approximately 7 a.m. the weakened supports together with masses of rocks collapse into the drifts of the 800 foot level flushing the poisonous fumes into the adjacent works. Um, the survivors said they heard what sounded like a gust of wind that instantly extinguished the candles. There were a lucky few with first-hand accounts of the incident, having escaped the shafts or finding themselves far enough away to survive. Elliot Lord, author of an 1883 history of the Comstock Mines, recounted that a John Murphy, a station man at the 800-foot level of the Yellow Jacket shaft, saw 15 lights of the station at once extinguished um, the foul blast stifled him, and he crouched on the floor, wrapping his rubber coat about his face. In a moment, he lost consciousness, but could remember when rescued that he heard a pitiful cry come up from the shaft from a lower level. Murphy, send me a cage. I'm suffocating to death. So although the disaster was always linked to the Yellow Jacket, the greatest devastation occurred at the Crown Point mine shaft and the Kentuck mine shaft. A survivor said that he and another miner were working on the 800 foot level when they heard a gale roaring through the drift and were instantly overwhelmed by smoke and gas. One struggled through the stifling atmosphere to the Crown Point shaft and was saved. The other fell dying in a drift beyond hope of rescue. Um, in the Crown Point mine, the morning shift was preparing to begin work. Uh, a cage containing 45 men descended with groups to be let off at the various levels. The cage dropped into a poisonous cloud and stopped at the 800 foot level where miners found victims calling for help 
Uh, survivors rushed the cage where they crowded in as many as they could fit onto the platform and at once the miners signaled to go back up. At the surface, they rushed off the cage so it could be sent back to the 800 foot level. When the cage returned to the surface, it only bore two brothers, immigrants from Cornwall, um, and those were the Bickle brothers. George was holding on to his brother as he and his brother had come up from the shaft. George's brother, Richard, had his head torn almost completely off and his left arm was hanging by a little strip of skin at his shoulder. He was dragged against the shaft timbers as the cage was coming up. George died the next day uh, from smoke inhalation and their third brother, there was a third brother, he died as a result of this disaster as well. In my first investigation here, um, we communicated with the spirit that identified himself as George. And in past investigations, devices have captured or spoken um, the last name Bickle. We have captured that. So I think that they are still here. So just to give some context, that massive mine disaster known as the yellow jacket but mm -hmm. it really decimated the crown point mm -hmm. mine was up there yes that's where the mine shaft was yeah and that's where there are still miners bodies underground to this day that they've I never mean, recovered the opening since been sealed covered and Under, underneath you. No. not this structure <coughs> just beyond this beyond. structure on the yeah, other side of the building okay. but mm -hmm. i mean in effect if you x-rayed it would be through here and there would be the bodies somewhere below this. At 800 well, feet. Close, yeah, close 800 there, feet. 800 feet under the ground. Um, yeah. But I'm, yeah, I'm not saying like yeah, right here. Right. There was at least 35 miners that died in this. At least in this 35. Shaft specifically? Specifically. And what does that look like nowadays? Uh, it's just, it looks like all this. There's no marking or anything, it's just dirt? Yeah. That's crazy. Like there's, there's no, no or like that. nothing. There's no way to get up there. There is um, driving. We have to drive around um, and access it through the driveway of the Crown Point Hotel and Restaurant. Do you think we'd be able to go up there tonight? Uh, yeah, I think so. We um, should 100% go up there. Is it actually still an opening remnant left there, or is it just a spot? Buried under all that dirt. I'm Underneath sure the dirt, is. okay. Yeah. But that'd be very interesting to show how And then, that you know, and you gotta remember these now. bodies. I mean, it was hot. It was, I mean, noxious gas, heat. Um, you know, when they brought miners, the miners, the bodies they could recover, I mean, they were... Their bodies were destroyed. They had to cover their faces to prevent their wives and children from seeing how obliterated their bodies were. And uh, a lot of them never came. Sorry. It still makes me, uh, I'm sorry. I get, um, when I'm here, I get, I get emotional. It's like they were, <laughs> sorry, I, you know what happens to me every time you'd think I'd be used to it, but I think that they, I think that's why a lot of them are still here because they're still underground. You know, they never got found, their families never got peace. Damn it. Sorry. Oh, you're fine. It's understandable. Yes. I remember coming up here one night and I was talking about the Bickle brothers. And that's part of the reason I think they're still here, especially them. But I remember talking about them up here and an investigator had a spirit box going and, you know, hearing a voice that had said, it sounded like it said, thank you. Um, I have a, a memorial for the brothers in my house. Um, because I feel like I've connected with them specifically and I wanted them to have somebody that would honor their memory, that maybe it would help them find some peace that somebody that's alive today still remembers them, still 
cares about what happened to them. Boy, that's so similar to what Colin does on so many of our investigations to remember the forgotten people. We'll put flowers down. I did, um, I actually found their gravestones. Really? And I, I cry every time. Oh, that's... Can you take us to, A, a couple of the hot spots, kind of explain where people have experienced things, and then B, kind of just tell some of the stories? My first night ever in this building, we were sitting here, and I was sitting right here with, we were using dowsing rods and a ghost meter. As we're communicating with the spirit, we're, the spirit's using both of these devices. The dowsing rods are corresponding with the responses from the ghost meter. One's for yes, two for no, cross for yes. That was the first time I actually believed in dowsing rods. I doubted them before. But to see these dowsing rods um, correspond with the equipment, with the answers we were being given, was interesting. And he communicated for a really long time. Being a sensitive, sometimes spirits can make me feel what they physically felt. And as we were communicating with this spirit who identified himself as George, we got that name at, before I ever got the information in here about him and his brothers. You know, so it was, it was really cool to find an actual article that confirmed the name George and, and validated that. And we were asking him questions and he was indicating that he, that he didn't feel well like he was sick. And as we were communicating with him, I started to feel worse and worse. Nauseous, dizzy, hot, cold sweats, really ill. One of my partners asked, you know, are you doing this to her? And he gave a CS response. And she asked him, is she the only person here right now that you can do this to? And he again gave a yes response. I, I ended up having to step outside, and what was interesting is when we, when we walked out of the building, this spirit came with us and continued to communicate with us outside of the building, building through the ghost meter. He was remorseful that he had uh, made me feel bad and apparently wanted to make sure that I was okay. I'm not sure that he realizes that he's passed because when he was talking about sharing with us about his illness and, and from what I was feeling I asked if that was how he passed and the minute I asked that question it was like an emotional gut punch I could feel his reaction to that question. It hurt him somehow. It, it caused an emotional reaction to that spirit. Not only did I feel it, the communication abruptly stopped. So I learned to be more careful about the questions that I ask. What was that? <clears throat> You'll get, um... Wait, can I ask? Can you want to ask, ask if you make another noise? I love this. If you're here right now, can you make another big noise for me? got like deathly still yeah, when you yeah. asked that. So when you, quiet. It got so like the air. <laughs> it's okay. Good people. Come in and, and talk and, and interact. I, I know you can make noises, you've done it before.
Hmm. Yeah, once again, very wow. quiet. So, let me ask you, oh, are you feeling something? You know, I, I, one investigation, um, a team came up here and I could feel like an ice cold, I mean, it was colder than cold right next to me and I could feel like it's, it's shape right next to me, totally freezing. I could feel it right behind me, you know? And sometimes during investigations, they get right next, I can feel them right there. And I know they'll, they'll make noises. Just... Like I've, I've uh, been in this building for so long that, you know, I've, I've learned to, to be able to tell the difference between the creaking sounds and the footsteps on the wood. Who would be haunting this building? Were there accidents in here historically? Not that we know of. I mean, I'm sure there had to be, there had to be accidents here. Accidents happen. You know, in 1935, things were a lot safer. And I, I have looked and, and tried to find any information on the seven years that this building ran to see if there were any deaths in the building as a result of this building functioning. And I have not been able to find anything that indicates that there were any deaths in this building as a result of this factory. So it's more that it's the incident at the crown point shaft itself and that yeah. energy is kind of stained here because i you know ever since i came to this building for the first time as a member of a team i just i i just developed an attachment to it mm -hmm. and uh i just i had to had to come back and in doing that and and doing this and and having teams come in i wanted to learn everything i could about the building's history and the property's history, you know, calling like city hall and looking for public records and all of that. There's been no indication that, that there was there was deaths as a result of the factories. But this um, building is very haunted. Yes. Active. Um, my husband and I, we have captured countless EVPs in here, mostly human sounding voices and some not so human or friendly sounding voices. So real quick interruption in the video. Um, we had to cut the interview for just a little bit in the, in the middle of the interview because right now we are going to go visit the gravesite that we just discussed in the video and then we're gonna go see where the actual old entrance to the Crown Point mine shaft is nowadays. Um, but since the sun is already setting, it's only 4.30 right now, but you can see out there the sun has already set. So we're gonna go do that real quickly and then return to the interview. So we're gonna go where first? Uh, you are gonna come down this driveway and you're gonna turn right. So the cemetery? Yes. Or where the, the graves, okay. This is unlike any cemetery I think I've ever seen. This is very, very abandoned. Wow. I mean, like, look at dude. These headstones are like. Total side note, the sunset up here. Beautiful guys. Natural lighting, baby. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. This is pretty crazy, y'all. So, 
This cemetery, this is the Gold Hill Cemetery where obviously a number of the miners who died in those incidents are buried. Um, there are a lot of historic burials and this is like an extremely decrepit burial ground. If you see behind me, these are all graves dotting the landscape. And like, just looking out over here, I don't see a single grave really. I mean, there are a couple in here in the more kempt area, but they're all toppled over the gates. The fences are smashed. Um, it's kind of hard to believe. Oh, here they are. Those were the flowers that I left. That would be them. Wow. So these are the graves of the brothers who died in the mining incident. It's too bad we don't have a spirit box. Kind of wish I would have brought mine now just to... So my... James and George and Richard. and Richard. Three. Wow. Who, the brother who was taken out immediately? Who was, who had died? Richard. So Richard was the one. Yeah, because Richard was... April 7th, or, yeah, April, April 7th. Did you, did you leave this? No, I'm Jesus. not sure what that is. Hmm. Right. Look at this. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, it's, it's like, like wax. Yeah, well, it looks like a beeswax of some sort. Dude. But it's like a gunny sack. Like, wow. That is do you good. know what this would be? No, yeah. I don't know what it is. And yeah, well, wax and stuff like that is. I've you know, seen a lot of weird stuff on cemetery like or when on I graves. Left flowers here. That wasn't there. These weren't here. Other candles. Like these cups weren't here. Mm -hmm. I remember. Yeah. yeah. James was the seventh, he was the seventh, so yeah, this brother died in that accident as well. They came here from England specifically to work in the mines. And then they all tragically died in the mines. Yeah. In so Richard accidents. and James died the day of, George died the eighth the day after from smoke inhalation. Wow. So, to the Bickle brothers, Richard, James, and George, we're gonna be over tonight at the mill, just over there, it's my dad and I. If you could come through and speak with us tonight, I don't know if you're here attached to your bodies, if you're over there in the mill, if your energy is stained over in that direction, but we would love for you to come out and speak with us, and you can follow our energy as we go back over there. Um, but yeah, we would love to just have an open conversation. We come from a place of love and respect. So come through if you, uh, if you can hear my voice. And with that, we're gonna, we got one more place to go look at before we begin the investigation, which is the actual location where the mine once, I don't wanna say sat, but where it was, the where the, uh, the it, yeah, shaft. the opening of the shaft where, um, where to this day, over 35 bodies are still underground, which is crazy to me. And probably not bodies, obviously, but just remains. Yeah. This, I'll say this cemetery, you can feel just energy. The gathering. Yeah. The gathering around. And what's, I mean, it's like, it's so, it looks almost mystical, you know? Normal cemeteries like in Texas are just, um, so like normal looking? It's a lot. I can feel it, like emotionally feel it. Yeah, it's almost it's like, like that they're here, I'm, you know? I'm, I'm trying not to cry again because I can feel it. All the people? I just feel just like I'm gonna cry. You know, it's... It's okay. Damn it. <laughs> Sorry. I don't, I don't really like crying in front of people. I mean, you look at it and it's destroyed. It's sad. It's, it's yeah. destroyed and forgotten and, you know, just forgotten people. Well, we're here to make sure that they're not forgotten. Yeah. That's Sorry, damn it. That's the point of what we do. <clears throat>
Okay. All right, well, I'm all. Let's go. Let's see the, the last place. Oh, sorry, that's my fault. Cabin right there. I think that's the miner's cabin. Oh and yeah. Experiences. Oh, I, was, here. I was reading Weird. about that. So yeah. where do I go? Opening to the Crown Point shaft originally would have been right up there. Right up here? Yeah. So, right here actually, right now, if you can't really see right now because it's dark, but the Crown Point mill is right over there. That's where we just were. Right there. If you can see against the sunset right there, those are the taller buildings that we were just looking at from below. Mm -hmm. And right here, would be the old opening to the Crown Point Mine. This is the location where part of the accident, the Yellow Jacket fire happened, and it would be actually like we're talking here in this area going downward, where, like we were saying, the bodies of those miners are trapped forever, and it's in the earth right and here. And it would be exactly where Richard Bickle died. This right here? Yeah, and Richard Bickle, the Bickle brothers, this would have been where they emerged from the mine shaft, came out, and then obviously all three of them were dead within the one, two day span of the, of the event. And I actually, <laughs> after my first experience here, I came back specifically, specifically looking for George. And it, it was before I actually worked doing this. I just, I had to come back and interact with that spirit again. So I went to the doors and I, I remember specifically looking for George and saying, I can't, I can't stay here, but meet me up on the hill. And I came up here with my cell phone and I asked if anybody was here and I got a response. You could just barely hear it. But when I asked is if, it, if somebody was here, you could hear a voice go, yes. Here in this area. George. After I went to the, do the door looking for George, asking him to meet me on the hill. So I want to make a point to the camera. We've been talking a lot about the Bickle brothers yeah. and how that is a very positive haunting. Mm -hmm. not, a, not a good haunting, but you know, there's no ill nature there. No. But I'm well, going to grab the other camera. Not towards me. Yeah, and I want to talk about up, let's just do it up here, the other stuff. Hold up, cut that one second. Let me grab the camera. But. My first night here, after dealing with George, who, through our devices, expressed remorse and a genuine concern for my well-being, we encountered something that was the polar opposite. It was... We were standing in the mill on an upper floor and it was the leader of our team and another investigator and we were communicating with something and as we're communicating with something I start to feel more and more pain in my abdominal area. That pain got to the point where I was buckled over in pain. It felt like somebody was stabbing me in my abdomen. It hurt so bad and um, you know, um, the investigators I was with, they, they asked, you know, are you, are you doing this to her? And this entity gave us a yes response. I am causing the pain that she's in. And when it was asked to stop, it made it clear that it wasn't going to stop. And it actually intensified. I, I couldn't walk out of the building on my own. I mean, this thing was hurting me. It made it clear that it was hurting me and it made it clear that it was intentional. Later on that night, we had stayed in a location that's actually just down from the mill. It's called the brewery, Big Blue House. Something actually followed us from the mill back to where we were staying, and we had to go back to the mill. And if you're familiar with the ghost meter, it has that, the, um, that gauge on it. You know, our, our, our team leader said, we got to go back. We have to go back to the mill right now because we brought something back with us and it's a problem and we need to go back and deal with it. And our, our leader of this group was like a deacon for a church. So we went back to the Crown Point Mill and he started doing prayers 
and our equipment as he was doing prayers to demand this entity leave us be. Um, Our equipment was going totally haywire. Like the ghost meter, it went all the way up as, as high as it could, and it held for about 20 seconds. Wow. The alarm, it was all the way up, and it held while... You know, the leader of our team was doing these prayers to get this to this entity to not follow us back to where we were staying. It was really intense. It was spiritual warfare. And definitely. Can we talk about the EVPs as well? So, you know, with the Bickle brothers, I I feel like they protect me to an extent. I think when I came back, when I came back to talk to George, because obviously the first night here, I wasn't protected from getting attacked. I mean, it was pain like I can't even, it hurt. Um, Obviously, I wasn't protected then, but it hasn't happened again. One night, my husband and I were filming, and we captured an EVP where you hear a male voice say, you have to go now. And then you hear something else respond, and it goes, no. It was just a growly, no. You know, so this was two different things. You could hear a male voice saying, you have to leave now, and something inhuman growled, no. And... I've started, you know, coming here more and more. It feels like there's a human male spirit that protects me while I'm here. I've captured so many EVPs of this this male voice. I've never had anything bad happen to me since I've come back. And I think that maybe I'm, I'm protected from harm because, you know, we've developed a friendship. Though there is something dark based on being attacked, inhuman voice. Yeah. So what would your theory be that you were talking about? Well, because other teams have come in and they haven't, I mean, except for that one time when I was with that team, I haven't had other people experience anything negative. But when I'm here by myself or with my husband, you know, we've, we've heard it. We've experienced it. it. The things that it says through an ovulus is very negative, you know. Fear me, you know, who are you, the devil. You know, just very stereotypical demonic responses. You know, so it makes me wonder if this is something that is attached specifically to me and is only here when I'm here. When I'm here, my husband's here, we go home and listen to our EVPs, there's this inhuman voice and there's other voices that sound like they're talking to this entity telling it to stay away, to go away. So I guess my final question, what would be the the most common things that people experience in the mill? Well, since really only paranormal investigators come here, you know, they do hear the footsteps and knocking and the building creaks and it makes noise, but A lot of times if you ask the spirits to indicate that they're there, you do it a couple times to confirm, they they make noises. You can hear footsteps on the floorboards above you. That's a lot of times during investigations, I hear that a lot, is investigators are saying, "We, we kept hearing footsteps walking on the catwalk above us, but we didn't see anything. You know, so- Very physical. You can hear a lot of physical sounds. You can hear footsteps above you since it's just the two of you. When you're in there, if you just sit there just below, like the middle floor, you'll probably hear footsteps on wood. 
Well, are you ready? I'm ready to go. It's getting cold. <laughs> I know your nose is oh. redder than Rudolph, I'm, I'm like, dude. I think my fingers are. Yeah. Like, oh, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> it's frozen. It'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotten chilly. All right. Well, yeah. I think that's perfect. Anything else? I will say, and it'll it'll be the last experience. And I felt bad because I misread some things. Um, there was a team here. And unfortunately, that team did not have the best intentions. I didn't know that, obviously. That night, they did their investigation. And we were sitting on the bottom floor, you know, closing up the investigation, talking about it, all that good stuff. And I could feel rage. Like, there was a moment where I lost control of myself for just a little moment. And the other investigators, they, you know, they said, you know, that they could see the change in my face. Like for a moment, I wasn't me. And I remember feeling rage. And the person in charge of this team, there was this, this feeling in me that I just wanted to, you know? Don't know why, but that's that's what I felt inside trying to get out was just the desire to just, you know, anger with the, yeah, like really pissed off. Now I could already feel that something was wrong. You know, I, I have a connection to this building and the spirits here. I could feel something was wrong as we we're closing this investigation. Somebody was upset, very upset. I didn't hurt him, obviously, but I could feel that desire to claw and rip and, you know, hurt this person. I wasn't going to stay. I was going to leave with everybody else. I had my bags packed and my equipment packed, my personal stuff. And out of my mouth came the words, I'm going to stay. The thing is, I didn't mean to say that. I didn't. Like, my mouth said it, but I didn't. I did leave. I lock up the building. I get in my car, and I see a shadow, a large shadow, pass in front of my headlights. And I park in the same spot all the time, where I'm parked right now. I saw the shadow. I could, I could feel the presence, but I just was like, you know, I gotta go home. I reversed out, and I left, and that road right. at night, the only lights you have are your headlights. Now, my husband's a mechanic, so I knew my car was fine. As I got to where there's no more light, my headlights started to flicker erratically. I had to fight to control my vehicle. I've made this drive so many times, even at night, the twists, the turns, like I'm used to it. It shouldn't have been that hard, but it was like something was trying to pull my car off the road. And that's a twisty mountain road. Well, that's a drop off. Literally. A drop. I came very close to crashing my van into the side of a cliff. So arguably it tried to kill you. That's what I thought. And I was confused. I didn't, I thought maybe, maybe one of the spirits is angry that I brought these people into the building. Maybe these people did something to disrespect them. And because I brought them into the building, they feel that it's my fault. And maybe they're punishing me for the behavior of these investigators. Maybe they were disrespectful. Maybe they did something wrong. So at this point, real quickly, I'm going to stop the video and kind of explain to you guys our thoughts about Cassie and what is happening there at the Crown Point Mill. So as you've probably noticed throughout this interview and this beginning of this video, Cassie is constantly referring to George Bickle. George died the next day uh, from smoke inhalation. Who was one of the men who died in the mining incident back in the day. She believes that George has uh, followed her, that he follows her throughout the, throughout the mill and that he actually comes home with her and protects her. Maybe I'm, I'm protected from harm because, you know, we've developed a friendship. Now, a lot of different people that believe in the paranormal, even religious individuals, think that spirits can take on other forms to make themselves more innocent-seeming or more likely, I don't know how you'd even say that, uh, to make 
people trust them, you know, like to get Cassie's trust, something might be taking the form of George to her or presenting itself as George, but it might not be George. In my first investigation here, um, we communicated with the spirit that identified himself as George. Now, this gets a little bit stranger when you realize that Cassie actually has a shrine built to George in her own home. Um, I have a, a memorial for the brothers in my house um, because I feel like I've connected with them specifically which may further actually invite this spirit, if it's pretending to be George, into her house. I don't know, there's just a lot of a lot of strange things. Cassie got really emotional talking about all these different subjects that we covered. It's okay. Damn it. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, a lot of them never came up. Sorry. It still makes me a... Uh... I'm sorry. Yeah, no. Um, and it made me kind of concerned for her well-being being in that area because to me, in my opinion, it doesn't seem like George is actually the spirit that is contacting Cassie and following her around. It seems like it's something darker. And now, like I've said in the past, I'm not a big demon guy. I don't believe in demons, but whatever this thing is seems to be a bit darker than your average spirit. And it seems to have taken on a different form to gain Cassie's trust. It's followed her home. It's been invited into her home through this altar that she set up for George. And in addition, just listen to what Cassie had to say at the very end of our night, which really sealed the deal and made us a little bit afraid for her well-being. Okay, I'm just going to ask really quick and interject. Um, mm. And you said that some of this activity has just real quickly followed you home, almost like in a demonic um, sense. Every night, when I tell my son, my four-year-old son, that it's time to go to bed, he is terrified to go to his room and he just keeps saying that he's afraid of him. The, the male spirit that's associated with this, I mean, I'm not 100%. Like, I believe that one or more of the Bickle brothers is with me at home. He's with me here, I feel. Even though I've, I've had some threatening things happen here, I feel protected. There may be something negative here, but I think the human spirits here protect me from harm. And I know at home, they wouldn't do something like this. They wouldn't terrify my son to tears where he is physically like I have to drag him to his room. Like it's, it's heartbreaking. But yeah, just to clarify, that is happening to you at home. It started two or three weeks ago that my son started being terrified to go to his room at night. He demands that his bedroom light is left on. When he goes to bed, he won't sleep with his light off. And he just says he's afraid of him, but he's four. He can't, he can't describe what he's seeing to me. But obviously to him, it looks like a man of some kind. My 11 year old, she's in trouble a lot. She's grounded all the time. She lies, she sneaks, she, her behavior is just, it's bad. I hear her in a room talking, you know, and I found this, um, I found this page that she wrote. Um, I found it in a notebook of hers. I went through her stuff and she was writing about a man. And she said that she's, and, and, and this was her sentence. I feel like the man is mad, not at me, but at my family. Alright everybody, so Jeff and I are here at the uh, Crown Point Mill. It is now way later at night. As you can see, it's completely pitch black out. We're the only ones here and Jeff has the key to get us into the mill. We're going to get inside and talk about some uh, some theories that we have before our investigation. But ready? here we are. It's the only way in and out. Okay, everybody, so it's now, like I just said, late, and we're here at the Crown Point Mill. Jeff and I have all of our equipment down here. Um, 
Well, it seems like from Cassie's perspective, she's telling us that this place seems to be haunted by one of the brothers who, who died in the horrific Yellow Jacket mine incident. But in my opinion, based on what she's been telling us, it really seems like those spirits might be here, but there is something much darker that is not only affecting her, it's affecting her family. It's affecting people that visit this place. And it's kind of eerie in here. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I can actually feel it. Yeah. Um, and it's like, it's something that's, that's, that's here. A theory that was running through my head as wild as this might, might seem is Nevada, Arizona, California, all those states have real deep, um, indigenous ties obviously i mean every, everywhere in america does but especially in these regions um and there's so much superstition tied to those to those tribes about ancient um powerful forces and spirits and what's really interesting to me is that the fire that was ignited in the mine um during the yellow jacket mining accident which ultimately killed so many people no one knows how it started or, or why it started and it makes me wonder if it's possible that some sort of ancient energy was pissed off that people were mining the land and doing all of this and, I don't know, knocked a candle over. If we're gonna go with theories that, like you guys saw in our recent episode in Houston, that spirits can move earrings up to, to attics, who's to say that something that's attached to this land was very angry about what people were doing to the land and decided to just do something about it, you know? There's, there's still no official explanation, but based on all these accounts and reports from this place, from Cassie and others, it really does seem to be that there's something evil in here, in this building. This is a huge building, and we're the only ones in here. We're locked in. I don't know. I just I want to get to the bottom of why this thing is targeting Cassie, why this thing likes to present itself as like evil. It's been possessing almost people. Like she, she was talking about you know, symptoms of possession and whatnot. So tonight we're gonna try and contact whoever really can come through, but I feel personally like there's something evil here. And I don't really say that often. I mean, I do when we go to a place where it's evil, but like this place is mysterious. There's mystery behind the accident that, that, that caused it to be almost haunted in the first place. There's mystery as to why the place is haunted. There's mystery as to why there's so much anger. There's literally human bodies. Oh, it's creepy when you look back there. Mm. There's buried human remains in the mine shaft, just yay, in the distance. They're, back they're back. yeah, back this way. So, I don't know, but we're gonna get to the bottom of it tonight. It's just Jeff and I here. How are you feeling? Papa Spooks. Um, cold, to be honest, I mean, one thing. Um, <clears throat> Like I said, there's huge vats in here. Uh, it's gigantic, actually. It's much bigger than I thought. And um, I think there's some kind of a feeling for me of, like you said, evil. I don't know. I think it's like a... It's unknown, I guess, to me, like my feeling, right? It's like, it's like I think there's something here. There really hasn't been many people here, right? Yeah. I mean, I think very few. So I think it's unexplored for the most part, and I think... Well, that's what we're gonna do tonight. Try to see what's here, but I feel there's 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 something here. I, I don't know what, but like I never do. But let's go. And everybody, I know there's never really a good time to say this, but before we start investigating and all of that, if you love the Paranormal Files, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you're watching, like the video. If you're watching this right now, especially during the live premiere, um, I want you guys to take 10 seconds, go down to the comment section below, and let us know where you would like to see us investigate. I wanna see hundreds of comments because we're gonna be reading your guys' comments and picking one top place from this video or the comment section of this video to go visit in 2022. So if you have a, a place that you would really love to see Jeff and I, Courtney and Jeff, Mary and I go visit, yeah. let us know below. It really does, uh, I know we can smile when we talk about this stuff, but it, it, it is very creepy in here. And like, it's dark. It, yeah, it feels, I mean, when you stand up there, uh, we'll show you guys, it is pitch black. There I mean, are no Virginia windows. Virginia City is out. I think that means let's, let's get rolling. I think we should. That was weird. It was like a knock. It was. Hello? It was like a, 
Like, like a, a louder than that. I don't know what the sound was. Oh, yeah. Let's well, go. With that, let's grab our stuff. Okay. And let's yep. just bring all this up there, don't you think? All this machinery is crazy to see. Yes. Okay, here, let's just turn the camera off for a second and just start this without equipment. I think. Better man. You okay? Damn it. <laughs> I'm sorry man, to laugh. So that cool. was just really. That was funny. <sighs> Damn it. God, that's weird how that hurts so bad. Damn it. It's weird that you're cold and I'm, I'm about to take my jacket off. Oh. I'm, I'm like, I'm like really cold. Here, we don't need to bring any of that out yet. Okay. None of it? No. I just thought we're going to try to do some stuff right here. Talking and... Yeah, here. You need a flashlight? Okay. We're here in the Crown Point Mill. Jesus, this is actually scary. It's huge. Um, my name's Colin. Jeff? I'm Jeff. My name's Jeff. <laughs> you always say that. Oh, what, what do I say? My name's Colin. Jeff. Well, I mean... <laughs> okay. What? If anybody's in here... I just thought... I, just, I thought I saw a shadow go across this. Oh, it's you. Never mind, it was you. If anybody's in here, if you suffered a workplace accident, if you died in the yellow jacket, Mind fire, if you're a brother of someone who died, or I'm gonna go out of the way and say it, if you're a demon, if you're a demonic, if you're evil, we are requesting that you come out tonight and speak with us. Yeah, this shit's like a horror movie, dude. Yeah, oh. Yeah. This could be like, these vats are just incredible. Looks like just like Texas Chainsaw Man. You know, like something can pop out of the corner here. Ooh, I got like total chills here. All right. If there's anybody in this building with us, can you make a noise and let us know where you are? Man, I'm I'm like charged right here. Hey, you know, I actually feel very creepy in here. This is unlike a location that I've been in in a long time. You know? Yeah, this is a different location. Second. Where are you in the building? What was that? I don't know. Could you... Could you knock on something like this? To let us know where you are? face back here yeah right here I cannot I can't even see my arm you know I got like a headache right here and like I said I'm kind of charged there's something here on this tank right here in this area like just how I feel this tank specifically yeah where does this go I can't see here oh what is this okay so that goes way up to the top Jesus, that is a huge tank. Oh, that's the entry right there where she said, right, George, over in that area? Mm-hmm. You catch a big fish with one of these. <laughs> Look at all these tools and stuff that are here. Yeah. Here, I'm gonna film for a sec. Wanna walk up these stairs and do it? Yeah. Hey guys, we're we're here to visit anybody that's here. If you can uh, let us know you're here somehow, make a, a distinct noise, any kind of a voice. 
If you're one of the miners that are in turn next door, only maybe 50 to 100 feet from, from our entrance here. You mean interred? Interned? Interred. Really? Interned. On oh, intern. <laughs> interred. <laughs> hey, I credit that to my sophomore and high school English teacher, Mrs. Morrison. Anyway, we'd love for you to come out and communicate with us. This place is, is huge. Where are you in the building? Okay, that's gonna be the pigeons. Oh, that was loud movement. Yeah. George. Knock. What is that? Yeah, it was a knock. What the heck? It's kind of picked up. It's a loud. Are you coming out? Oh, I'm feeling like again. Come and walk towards us. George, is that you? That was his trap. If you're shuffling over there, can you keep coming towards me? down there. That's going to be on the static. Do you hear that? Dude. Shh. What the f***? Jesus. Hello, if you're here, keep coming towards us. God, the robot's going nuts. It hadn't gone off. Listen to that, man. Okay, so everybody really, I mean, the REM pod, I hadn't heard it gone off at all. And that thing's going nuts, right? Yeah. And it just many places it never goes off. So I think there's, there's obviously something messing with that right now. I mean, we're not even down there. We couldn't, nothing moved. We're two floors above it. There's, and there's footsteps that yes. sound like yeah, a yeah. human. Here, I think let me hold this. I think we come a little bit more. <gasps> Jesus Christ, dude. Sorry. I swear. Let's go, go down here. I gotta, I gotta tell people too, when that went off, there was noises 360. Oh, man. oh my god. And like I felt like scared, you know. I did too. Like really I did too. Out. I did too. Um 
Well, I think with its REM pods, it, you know, do you want to talk to the REM pod? Like, if you're down there, can you step towards us? Be careful around the corner there. Is that open? Is that a door? What is that? You remember that's where we went out earlier. Oh my god, really? Is it open? Huh? Oh shit. Dude. Can that oh my gosh. Okay. Oh my gosh. This is like a horror movie. If you're up here, George. Richard. Richard, come into the mill with us. Whoever's up here. Yeah, let's go. This looks spooky, man. But that doesn't make sense, because this was like, we were hearing like. Yeah, no, from like uh, here. definitely. Yeah. It is eerie though, when you consider that this is a door. So people would have been coming in and out, walking in and out all the time. And that's where we're hearing footsteps, mm -hmm. you know? Man, I have a headache. Again. There's something different here. I'm not really quite sure what I'm feeling, but I'm, I'm kind of like, again, kind of charged, not you know? Good. Like, yeah, no, I think that's what I'm kind of getting at, because I don't know why I feel good. But that REM pod, we've got to actually somehow. I think we should go down there, but I mean, it's a long ways down. Follow us down. We're coming down. Want us to come down here because we're coming. I mean, we came all the way up and then <laughs> randomly it just went off. <laughs> Could have done it before we got up here. I mean, why, you know? Look at this place. This is like unbelievable. Horror movie. It is. Okay, we're coming back. We're here. Did you want us to come back down here? George. Okay, so I just want to kind of say too, okay, if that device is malfunctioning, right? You reset it, why doesn't it just go back to doing that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, really. Okay, everybody, so Jeff and I have been setting stuff up. Definitely very creepy in here, not gonna lie to you guys. It's big and it's empty in here, but it doesn't feel empty. You know? Jeff, you want to explain some, what you got set up right here? Yeah, and I would say some places do feel like really empty, you know? And this place does not feel that way at all. But what we're doing is we've got a motion sensor. Supposedly this area, they've caught a lot of, of shadows and orbs and EVPs down here. So we've got a motion light way down there, one here. We're gonna turn on the paranormal music box right here over against this tank where she said they got orbs and a shadow and then back here we still have of course the other REM pod we've got the EVP recorder still going rolling the other camera still rolling some balls and so forth but we're gonna set this over down this hallway okay yep and I'm gonna I'm gonna record on this voice recorder for this specific session are you coming over right away Brand new, the other REM pod. <laughs> Brand new I, battery. I, I totally, just, I'm, I'm not even kidding you online. I know people are gonna just never believe this stuff, but I feel like if I, I had nothing on my arms, every hair on my body would be standing out. 
on him. If you're coming over here, come over and talk into this recorder right here so we can pick up your voice. Wow, look at that, dude. Okay, can you give us another sign you're here? I gotta say as well that Jeff is feeling really cold, but I'm so hot that I only have a t-shirt on. It's like 45 degrees out, and I could literally take my shirt off because I'm so hot. Like, yeah. it's really but weird. I, I am actually freezing. Yeah, and he's freezing cold. I've got a, a, a shirt, I've got my sweater, and I've got my, my vest, obviously. It's a Patagonia as well, it's very warm. Okay, and so I I'm literally gonna, have a t-shirt. So I'm gonna go over and Reset Seven, them. Okay. Okay. We're gonna. I'm gonna grab the ovulus too. Okay. One turn the music box on. Oh, Is that one off, right? Yeah. Are you filming? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Right when you went to do it. Oh my God. Look at this. Okay. We're gonna turn the music box off on here. Okay. You wanna play with us a little bit? Look at that totally different pattern, too. The purple now. I mean, what's up with that REM pod? I have never seen it do that. <laughs> Let's have you reset that again. Okay. Okay, but look at this REM pod. That was going nuts and it hasn't gone off again. There's, you know, there's something to that. Attitude, chance, foot. Begin attitude, chance, foot. I'm just going to straight up ask you at the beginning, are you a human? How was this flying out? Was this crick? Are you a demon? There was just a shadow that flew underneath this wood right here. I got the f***ing rim pod. What? Silent. Silent. I know, I know. Do you know a woman named Cassie? What do you think of Cassie? Yeah, I know. It's up that area again. So the REM pods again, going crazy and nothing. Why are you being so quiet? Are you afraid? If you're an evil, evil, scary thing, you shouldn't be afraid. Afraid. Okay. Well, why don't you come over then? You can attack well, me. You can do anything. You can punch me. You can scratch me. Take my soul. I don't really no. care. Do it, please. Why the f do you like to scare people? Do you like to prey on certain people? I mean, I think we already have responses. Remember from the REM pod. Yeah. A lot. They have come over to us. Legion hundred. Legion hundred. Isn't that like demonic? Yes. A legion, a legion of demons. A hundred. Oh. Or angels. Got like my sinuses popping in my head. Hidden. Legion hundred hidden. So legion. So is there a lot of you in here? If there's a lot of you in here. All right. Numbers sugar. sugar. Numbers sugar. Apocalypse. Cell plant. So this is like a plant. Yeah. You know, like a plant. And she was talking about off camera. Dude. Trying to sell it. Dude. When we were in here, 
Do you remember what I said? George. Oh my fucking god. George died the next day uh, from smoke inhalation. Maybe I'm, I'm protected from harm because, you know, we've developed a friendship. In my first investigation here, um, we communicated with the spirit that identified himself as George. George. Oh my fucking God. I'm sorry. We gotta get this on here, dude. George. Oh my George God, begin. Dude. Dude, hold on. Okay, guys. That is insane. Dude, it's... Dude, it's George. Look at all my hair. What the fuck? The voice recorder. Dude, look at the voice recorder. It's wigging out. He's August oh. has... Dude, but... Is this actually George? Tease. Okay, but it said George. George. That's unbelievable. The one name. The unbelievable. one name that we needed to say. George. Okay, so what kicked me off, Colin, on when I was talking to you, right when I came in here, remember at the cemetery? I was talking with you guys. I was talking to Cassie. I said, the cemetery reminds me of like an apocalypse. Do you remember? I did. I hope we got that on yeah. camera. But that's what I, I, I said. I did. I said, this reminds me of an apocalypse. And that, I mean, that freaking came too. up on here. And then George, I mean, can you believe that came up, honestly? George. George. <laughs> so let's talk to George. Do you protect Cassie, George, That's here? right when I started bringing up her name, too. Yeah, you're right. I literally said, do you know Cassie? George. That is She's insane. Just, I can't he believe her. George came up on there. Me either. I feel like he's over here. Because that's where this okay. all came up. Okay, well, let's go. Funky smell over here. George, are you back in this area? I mean, I honestly, that's that's amazing that George came up. Oh, that was a thump. Oh, that wasn't me. That's what it sounded like, though, back then. That. that was like deep. Okay, so George, you're here. We know what happened to you. We're sorry. But can you give us some kind of sound or talking to this device. We've got two different ones. Make the lights go off on the bridge over here. Use your- Oh, oh dude, 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 dude. <laughs> Okay, thank you. George. Most. George. Most. George. We're, we're dealing what with George. Dude, that's crazy. Is that insane or Right what? when you asked it? Oh my God. What are, what are the odds? Dude. What are the odds? Okay, let's just go with this thing, okay? I'm gonna turn this music box so it's facing this direction. Okay. Make the lights go off on the bridge over here. Use your- Oh, oh dude, 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 dude. <laughs> So George- Oh, there's light. Storm. Storm. I think someone's coming over here towards us. Can you make that other light go off? Yeah, okay, ask weird. ask about George. And you know what I'm thinking? I don't know that it's George. I don't think it's George. You know what I'm saying? No. And that's what I was going to say earlier. I think that Cassie, she likes to think that George is protecting yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. Oftentimes people say these evil entities take right. on familiar For sure. shapes and forms. Right. And her, She's let it into her house. She's okay. being shrine. And her car story? Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the way it is. No. Something tried to kill her. I think so. Something from here tried to I mean, that's just murder. our opinion. You know, Cassie, she'll see this on the show. But I don't think that I don't think it's George here. I don't this think, isn't I don't a feel. feel. Like comfortable energy. No. That's what I mean. This is not a feel of like a comfort feel. I mean, how do the, these REM pods just go berserk and they do nothing? You know? I mean, I really feel like it's not a good no, I, energy here at all. I don't feel protected. No, I feel no. stifling. And also, I got to say, it's really weird. This whole time that I've been in this building, my back, not like a scratch or anything, but yeah. like my shoulder hurts yeah. so bad. Yeah. That it's like, I, I feel like I need to like sit down. But like all at dinner, 
the whole rest of the day at the cemetery, I wasn't yeah. feeling bad, but both times when we were doing interviews in here, my back, yeah. like on the right side, like hurts. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I just thought I'd make note of that. Are you touching my back? Slain. Yeah. Slain. You know, come over and talk to us again. Again, can you come and talk to us? This direction, boy. Oh my gosh. I asked it to, to possess me. Incubus is the one that takes it in, the succubus is. Really? Or, I don't know the difference. I, I should probably know. Either way, incubus, direction, boy. Is the incubus coming in my direction? Because I asked you to. Harry fell. Waters. waters. Harry I mean, fell. Waters. Oh. Are we talking to someone named Harry? Foot pattern beware. Look, is it saying like we could fall somewhere in here? Yeah, Foot yeah. pattern beware. That's a warning to us, or? Are you gonna push us off or, or shove us through the floor? Yeah. View yeah. cell again. You're welcome to come across the bridge and join us here. It's kind of creepy over here. I just can't believe George came on there, dude. Yeah, I mean, honestly. Project Wait a second. Who, who was the other? It was Richard, George, and who was the third? Who are you? Look at the audio. This is like glitching. Oh. You see this? Look at. I'm, I'm, oh. Things, the ovulus is acting really weird. I just blanked out. Are you upstairs or on this floor? Yeah, you know, I feel oh. the most from over there. Me too. Yeah. I do too. It's kind of like, I think we're, we invited him over there, dude. Yeah. But it's like, what's up with these REM pots? Bang, bush, him, place, few, boy. See, we're coming back. Bang, it's, it's bush, again. It's again a boy, you know? Place, few what would be boy. A, what would be boy? I don't know. Manual, law. Should we do spirit box? Yeah. Chain rust. Oh, yeah. Map glass. Wow. Chain Lots rust. All, all applicable here. Can you come down here and join us? Dude, your, um, uh, this died. Your thing died. See if it turns back on. Bring it up and don't turn anything yet. Oh, yeah. Oh, it just ran out of recording space. Did it? Okay. Yeah. Once again, I'm inviting you down here into our almost circle, if you would. Come from any way you want. Oh, to the light. Look at it. Okay, stay, stay still. I'm gonna point this this way because of the light going off. Let's... There's a demon in here. If there's something evil, if you're not a good person or you want to hurt somebody, <gasps> oh, oh, Jesus Christ. Right there, right when I said that. Yeah, so you want to hurt somebody? Okay. Again. And we're totally still. Okay, so, and once again, that's pointing directly 
to the left of us, but that's supposed to be eight to nine feet at the most. That's 15 feet. Okay, we're gonna come upstairs. We're gonna try to talk to you. So we're gonna leave you here. If you wanna interact with those things, go ahead. Okay, hey, George, if you're here, if you're here, which we think you are, we think, can you tell us, just say your name? What's your name? Oh my God, I thought I heard you calling. Tell us how you died in the mine. Again, I'm going to say if you're one of the miners, did you die by smoke or fire? We're trying to determine if you're human or not. Are you human? Can you say yes or no? What's your name? Brian, I mean, George over here. Really? Wow. Are you a demon named George? Are you down here? Ooh, this is where I feel charged. This is where I feel again. The charge again is just right here. Right here. Oh, I just feel like, like we should try to do something here. Right here. Against this tank. Can you give us a sound like this? Whatever this thing is does not want to talk to us, you know. The light just died. The light just died. Light up. This light just yeah, died. The light just died what? right when we went silent. What the? And you said this. You were just saying how you feel it right here in oh the fucking light. Oh, God. That, okay, that's creepy. Actually, that's weird. Yeah, right here. here. This is um, exactly. Who's with us right now? Oh man, I am like, again, this is where I get charged here, dude. You wanna come down here and talk to us down here? What was that, dude? <laughs> the, the, the light! That was a flashlight! What? That was a serious? flashlight! Really? Yes! Okay. How? How? Look at how I'm holding it. Look at how I'm holding it. How how does that happen? How? There's no there's no light. What here. happened to it? I didn't even know. It just flickered. Look at that. Okay, this is something. Why don't you go grab the REM pod? and bring it right here. Oh. I don't know what. Oh, oh, dude, 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 wait, wait, wait. wait, hold on. Colin, what the hell, dude? Hold up. Okay. Flashlight just died. Dude, are you serious? I'm not. Is dead? It's dead. Oh my God, are you kidding me? 
Dude, both you see that even flickered okay, a little bit? Dude, I'm charged here and my back, I, it's like, I'm creeped out here. Okay, yeah, that's, that was very... Okay, let's go get, let's go get, okay, first of all, let's go get... Okay, that is, okay, let's just pause I, for I a moment. I Okay, I'm gonna pause there, for a moment. There, I got you. Just for a second, because that was a little bit creepy yeah. that we just reacted to, and I'm a little freaked out by okay. that corner, but look it. Here's the flashlight that I've been holding. It's... Oh, oh. Okay, but it's completely screwed in, if you can see that. Oh, my... And, my, now, and now it comes back... My on. light, though, died right I know, in the tank. I know, but that's what I mean. Your light died, then this went out, I stopped know. working, now it's working okay. again. I think we need to go over in that that's spot. That's fucking weird. Okay, let's yeah, go over to that spot. Weird, dude. And let's bring the recorder and the REM pod. Sh should we get another light here? Like here's the motion light again. Really? Yeah. Just randomly. Hello? 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 Oh my god, look, I'm crap. Oh my crap. Literally, that sounds like, sound like a human. It's, it sounded like banging on the side of that. Can you do that again? That was the loudest thing all night. Oh my god. <sighs> I'm actually seriously kind of like anxiety. Me too. You hear that weird like squeaking? It's like a wheel. It is like a pulley. We weren't even facing it. Oh, the second one! Both of them! Both of them! Both of them! Both motion lights. Both fucking motion lights. Keep it on the motion lights. Oh. Can you make the uh, oh. the music box go off? Come on in. Dude, all my hair is on end right now. Okay, dude, I'm getting this out. This has been like a very intense five minutes. Ooh, I'm actually really creeped out oh all of a sudden. I'm, I'm that's the first time that other one came on now. Oh, okay. look, there it goes again. Okay, we are you here? Moving. Let's make these boxes light up. Here's something we just got. Uh, you got rolling? Okay, hey, so before we... you explain this, can I say something? Yeah. Can you film me? Yeah. But I just want to express, first of all, um, before we move on to more investigating as a rundown of what just happened, your light died. This flashlight just flickered, went dead for like 10 seconds. We came over here. Then was it the noise? Here, yeah, the noise. But then remember, the... When I was over, I feel the charge over there. Then and my freaking light, light dies, died right off. Then the camp, then that went off. Then here, and and then we got over here. Super loud fucking noise from up there. Then both okay, motion the, lights. The went thing off. just flickered over there. Um, then both motion lights went off. Usually when we investigate, there's like known entities. There's like a known history, but this building, it's like we don't know what's in here. We only have a couple teams that have ever investigated this place. Whatever the is in here doesn't want to tell us anything about it. It just wants to do this shit that's kind of like creeping us out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. I, I don't. So think I just want people to know that so, we're trying to get answers, but yeah. it is literally yeah. so thus far been like impossible. Okay, but I think once again, we can lose sight of the fact that we got that actually on the obelisk, George came up. Yeah. Oh we put yeah. It on film. Yeah. I mean, that has to be the biggest one that we've had. That has to be like mm -hmm. gigantic. Yeah. That's who she thinks is here. Yeah. Cassie. Yeah. Is George. Or at least one of the she miners. thinks and, is here. Yeah. Exactly. And we went to his grave too. Yeah. And invited him back here. And that's the grave I said. This area reminds me of the apocalypse. That came on the obelisk as well. Mm -hmm. But anyway, this this is a, a, new, a new device we've got. <gasps> no way, right? When we're talking about George. It hasn't been that it hasn't done that once. <gasps> Come on down. I'm feeling charged. Me too, man. <gasps> Okay, now what the hell? Do you want to say something to us? Dude, that was like a, yeah, that was like the, a fat bull. Yeah. <gasps> Footsteps. Dude, I'm hearing a boom motion. Was 
it's like there's literally so much movement and noise, including the loudest noise of the night from up there. But then when we go up there, it's like nothing. My right ear is like clogged. Let's go turn okay. let's turn that on and go can, full lights out. Okay, can I? Yeah. Okay, so once again, before we get interrupted again, this is uh, called the Paralite. It's we haven't ever used it. Our friend uh, Kalina in Wisconsin had one. We thought, oh, let's get let's get one. It's basically a K2, right? Just a, uh, so we're gonna open it. Okay, and I'm gonna set it over here on, by the bridge. Supposedly a shadow figure. So again, spirits or whoever's here, there's another device for you to play with. It's like a toy, so you can light that up whenever you want to. But we're we're getting down to the end of. We've been here for hours, and we're gonna leave pretty soon. So. If you do want to communicate further with us, now's the time. Are you coming over? Here, hold up, I have an idea. For the first time in a while, we're gonna go. Let's light again. We're gonna go fully infrared. All right, we're in the dark now. We're completely vulnerable. If you are really a demon that's trying to scare people, possess people, this is the... No. Because the camera's still going here. You're blocking the camera back here. That's crazy, right? Look at right when I said we're in the total dark and the demon can come, the, the light turns on. But now is the time to come scare the shit out of us or do whatever you want. If you really are scary, you know, you're this big, powerful, evil guy. say that but I feel it let's go here I know but I'm saying I, I literally feel something like here right when you're saying that like okay. nothing something's happening here I'm gonna turn that on it's got calibrate okay that thing hasn't gone off in 30 minutes okay I am completely charged. This is the first time the music box has gone off all night. Oh my gosh. I'm telling you, this is the spot. Whatever this is happening. This is here. right where our lights died, too. I've got like a headache. Look at this. I've got like a headache. And I told you a couple seconds ago I felt something standing over here, too. Okay. You have to speak. You have to make a loud bang. You have to move. Stop playing with these. Okay, wow. This is the area I thought. Look at this. Okay, you please, can you please step away? Get out of the path. Dude, this is exactly where I told mm -hmm. you I feel charged. Yeah, you're right. My, my light died right here. Your flashlight died right here. This is like a portal or something. Yeah, right here. You know what I'm saying? Look at that thing. It's like an explode. Look at end the music oh, box. Look at this. The music box hasn't gone off. No, not once. Light. And like, what's behind us, you know? Okay, let's, I'm gonna step away. Here, I'm just gonna step sec. away. Yeah. It's bizarre. Yeah. I don't feel like I do right there. No. It is. How about it really you? Is. I mean, it's like honestly. It's thick right there. 
And that's what I was saying when I was like, I feel like there's somebody to my right. Yeah. It was actually like I well, felt like a wall, just energy. It could be to your right down here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It was this direction. Look at this but stuff. The device is right here. <laughs> okay, so once again, not to, to repeat and repeat, this is the exact spot right here where I was standing that I kept filling a charge. And the light on this camera went black and Colin's flashlight went black. And this is the first time the paranormal box has gone on. Oh, this! No, 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 Dude, I'm getting kind of freaked now. I'm very freaked. Okay. That was real. That was like too much. <sighs> Man, I'm telling you. Dude, my heart rate, my heart is actually racing, dude. Yeah, well, same. Okay, we gotta. Look, actually, at, this, look at this dude, thing. Dude, is that gotta, you back there? What the? The thing is going crazy. Okay, can we talk about that? Fucking yeah, what is it? Too? It's what a chain. What's that? It's yeah, a it chain. was literally like. Dude, it's a chain, though, dude. Like metal, like a chain. We have to go back there, dude. And we literally, like, when we were sitting over here, we were hearing, like, pulleys. Yeah. Like, you and I, I don't squeaky. know if that came through on like camera. Yeah, like a squeaky squeak. pulley. But that 100% okay. came from behind us okay. over there. Dude, I just, I think we got to go back over there. <sighs> I'm, like, actually anxiety kind of, like, feel for me right now. And this is the kind of thing that, I, on camera, people don't experience this. You don't no, have the feel. Like I'm my, really sweating. I, like, I have that. a stomach ache. <sighs> and I'm actually feeling like I just don't feel very good. No, I feel I feel awful. Okay, there's this is not a good energy here. Whatever the hell that was, dude. What? The REM pod quit. No. The REM pod quit. What the? Shh, fuck? Shh, 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 hold on, hold on, no, no, hold on. You're we're moving. Dude, I'm kind of afraid to go here. I'm kind of afraid to go over here. But the REM pod. And the music box was completely silent too. Like, look at that. Let's back up a little bit. What the f past here dude we gotta th you gotta look you gotta look behind you here go around here Wait, look at <laughs> dude, I'm not saying that dude there's a chain right here oh I, I think it's for sure for me gonna be a sound like that let me, let me just oh, man. how fucking crazy is that though that that <gasps> REM pod stopped after dude, we heard the, that noise the REM pod. It's, it's, and if it was glitching, it would be it's still silent. glitching. It's completely silent. And it's on still. There you go, guys. You can see it's still. Oh my god, my camera battery is about to die. Do you need to get a different? Yeah, one? yeah. Okay, we better. Here, long, 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 long. <laughs> yeah, please come with me. <laughs> I can't believe that all of that that noise. Both those noises have to be some of the loudest in a long time. Dude, I'm not kidding. Things going off. Look at the light. Quick, 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 quick. Oh. Look at that. Oh my god, it's going on. Look at that. The motion light. That's the first time that's gone tonight. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna break. Yeah, you weren't even over there no, to touch no, it. No. The proof on camera, oh, too. Look at they're both on. Weird, dude. Okay, let's bring them over here again. We're gonna go one more time, but I'm gonna actually... And look at, there's proof that the REM pod's working. Yeah, oh, it's working. But we're gonna do this. We're gonna re reset. I mean, why are those going, going off, dude? I mean, honestly. No, they usually go off immediately. 
Okay. What the hell? Okay, that is hey, what? weird. <sighs> and look at the other what one the went hell? off right away. This is like a and a portal That's like right you. here. I'm telling you, man. You know, all I'm these devices. Set this up here. Okay. We're gonna re reset. Oh, oh, look at this. Okay, I think after I think, you put it down. I think they're too. ready to go. Okay, I'm gonna move the paranormal box this way. Okay. Sure. And then ready. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no way that that is going should be going off. Okay, so you ready? Uh, should I put this behind it? Sure. Okay, you gotta get over here. Okay, there's something going on in here. Oh, this is where I feel it. Look at When you walked by it, it went down. <gasps> Dude. What? Go ahead. Okay, now what the yeah. f no, is dude. that? I don't know. If anything, it should go off harder when you approach it. You wanna step forward again and come through if this is a portal? We're going to be leaving pretty soon. It's been awesome that you've communicated with us. Whoever you are, good or bad, show us you're still here. Show us you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like cut off. <laughs> I think a five minute Estes session right here we should do okay, in the go, dark. Go. Let me, let me, you just turn your light on, I'll grab it. There's proof the music box working. Yeah. Look at your light. Look at the stuff in front of your light. Oh my God. <sighs> okay, everybody, so to finish this investigation, we've got all this equipment set up, the music box, the REM pod, the cat balls. It should be noted that none of them have gone off in the last five minutes, but they've all been on. You can see right there, these are the same devices that were just freaking out. So to see what the fuck is up with this little corner thing, we're going to do an Estes session. Jeff's going to ask questions and... Uh, yeah, we're gonna see what we can get response-wise. I kinda wanna get out of here. Okay, everybody. We're gonna go lights out, right? Yeah, we're gonna do it in the darkness. Okay, so I think I gotta I don't know why I'm in a lab. <laughs> I've got a major headache. Lights out, okay. So. How did you guys die? Who's here? My boy. Okay, my boy, you said that on the Ovilus. What's your name? I thought I just heard Colin, but it was like, oh. So you think my boy, Colin? No. Are you a demon? You know, this is really creepy. I've never had this happen in an Estes session before. Usually I'm just, okay, I'm getting really creeped out. Um, usually I, oh my God, I have really bad chills on my neck. Um, usually I just see the, um, the black, but I'm seeing like a white face with like stitched, um, teeth. And I literally have full body chills. I feel almost like it's like touching my neck. So you're a demon. I'm actually like really creeped out right now. Are you a demon? I don't know if I'm comfortable doing this. I'm, and I'm like, I've been warm all night and I'm like freezing I'm cold. Low like this. So I feel like it's like right behind you. You can't dude. hear me. What is your name? It's like. What is your name? Say Keep your, name. your teeth sharp. We're teeth sharp. Six. Oh yeah. I want to eat. So are you a demon? Oh dang. Uh, are you? Or a demon. You can hear fine. It's you need, funny because I was just thinking I can't hear that many voices. You need to say it louder. Are you human or are you a demon? Upstairs. I'm walking. Dude. Any time now. Did you die here or by here? No. Find me up here. Okay, where did 
watch you die. Where did you die? Tell me where you died. Don't mourn her. Who? Who is her? What's her name? Oh, I just heard some whispering. Give your kids back. Are you talking about... Who are you talking about? Jesus saves. Again, you never told me, are you good or evil? Just answer that simple question. Answer the question, good or evil. Early and late. I didn't ask early or late, I asked good or evil. She's troubled? So who are you talking about? I'm always about? here for you. Who are you talking about? It's a she. Let go of your kids. My brother. Who's here? We're here. Okay, I asked who's here and you say we're here. Who's we? <laughs> It's almost Christmas, so I think it's like a Santa thing, but it was like, he's waiting. sudden getting the chills who is on Colin's neck do you know where we're from usually one stay a while get started can you tell me once again are you good or are you evil no. Tell me, just that answer that. Are you good or evil? It's mine. What is yours? She. What's her name? Tell me her name. A anti. Tell me her name. Why? Because I, I want to know what's her name. When you say she is mine, who are you talking about? It's me. What do you mean? What's your name? There's no point. There is a point. I'm trying to find out your name. Who am I talking to? Okay. I'm fucking done. Done? Anything makes sense? Yeah, I think so. Uh, the REM pod was going off. Oh, really? Yep. And uh, there was noises. There was a bang above my head. I had to come swing up really quick. What do you think? I'm ready to go. I'm kind of drained. Yeah, I feel like... It's like we've been here like hours here. I'm cold. Oh, wow. What a night, y'all. Yeah. Well, we got... I think end of the investigation here. Look at this. The REM pod was going off when you were... What, where was that at? The REM pod. That was the REM pod. What the... Yes, we are going to leave. Now's the time to speak up, because we are leaving. Yeah. Like, there are noises in here that are obviously building noises, yeah. but yeah, then I, there's the ones, mm -hmm. I mean, especially the one over here and that one oh. up there were loud. There was a, a really good one when you were, when you were uh, in the Estes method. But yeah. like, like Cassie was saying, when, once you're in here, you know the you, you know the sounds that are the building, and then the sounds that aren't. It becomes kind of obvious. I think my ass got splinters. <laughs> I'm with you. Okay, so real quick, my thoughts. 
But I think personally there's either one or two things here. Number one, I have felt a couple of times, even right now looking up here, I can feel like 40 people looking at yeah, me. Yeah. And it's not, fucking creepy. I agree. Like, I can literally feel like just men. <laughs> That's the other rampart. Oh, it's this one. It's this one, dude. Men leaning over the railings and stuff, like looking at us, or I feel it's potentially something darker. Could have had to do with the initial mine disaster. Who fucking knows, you know? I think we kind of went through a, a pretty active period back there, and it seems like it's kind of like. It's like quieted down. Do I'm think? the opposite. I just got the most really? biggest chill I got the whole night just now. Okay. Oh, see, there, there's something up here. Dude, something, splintering wood. Something just came in here, and even under my coat, I can like feel. Really? Are you trying to scare me? Come on, you're gonna have to try harder. Get closer to that light. That'll scare me. Why don't you light up our lantern for us? If you got some power, go ahead and show us. Oh my God! Dude. What was that? Wait, no, no, dude, 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 no, wait, 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 no, no, is that you? Hold on, hold on. Turn the light on. No, no, who was that? What was this? I swear that was something okay. walking down yeah. the stairs, like right here. Okay. Yeah, I feel it. Okay, let's grab. Grab the case. Okay, let's, let's, well, let me, let's not forget anything. Here, let me finish my thought. I'm serious. I just got the biggest creeps out of all of them just now. Okay. I feel like it could be something darker that Cassie is confusing for George. Or maybe George is a real spirit that's coming in to help Cassie. I don't really know, but there is something here that is very, very dark. You can feel it. Jeff and I have felt it. Look at this activity, guys. It hasn't been trying to explain who it is, like a spirit that needs help or wants to talk. Whatever's been happening tonight has been engineered to scare us, which is why it's like, mm -hmm. it just seems to be darker. Coupled out with the fact that recently Cassie's had something follow her home that's been affecting her entire family. Multiple people have experienced really dark activity in this building. It's just fucking weird, dude. And I'm like, I'm, I'm just ready to get yeah. out of here. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Well, you know, my, my thoughts again are, Again, the biggest thing for me is the actual George coming through the obelisk. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. And then Apocalypse for me. But a lot of activity. And I think, to me again, I think when Cassie... Um, <gasps> right when you said Cassie, Cassie. dude. I'm telling you, that, Cassie, that type of shit has happened Cassie multiple is times. Who they know here. And Cassie has been, like many of us you know, do it, and life has been struggling. And I think that we, we maybe tell Cassie too that. Right when you said she, Cassie I know, again. I know. But I think that maybe again she's confusing the energies that are here and she has to be a little more careful uh, who she's communicating Look with. Look, when you said be more careful, it went away. Yeah. But yeah. It's I, like it's saying, I, like, don't be careful, let me in. You know yeah, what I mean? But I do think it's like, like discerning spirits and Catholicism, which I grew up in. It's like that, understanding if you're talking to good or evil. And I think in her mind, she's very confused and it's because of whatever is in here. And, yeah. and I, don't think it's a, I don't think it's good, you know? And, and finally, I would say, it, it kind of brings me all the way back to the mining accident, you know? Like did that, if you will, evil force or bad energy that maybe caused that is still residing here on the land. This is the only you know part I mean? of the facility, you know, that's yeah, that, here. I, I know. All those miners' bodies, all so they have is sand and this. It's kind of like, that's my feeling anyway. But yeah, it's this needs to be explored a lot more, so I hope there's some other investigators that kind of come out here and, yeah. and, and choose this place. And, uh, and Cassie needs uh, our support as well. But yeah, um, it's, a, it's a creepy place. And yeah, that's just to cap that off, like my thoughts also. Yeah, because we got the name George on the ovulus, which is like crazy because that's the only name that Cassie was saying she felt like was in here. But that also is like, is that George or is it that, that thing? Is it that evil whatever pretending to be this George and using just the name? 
Get close to people. There you go. Right when I said that. Are you saying that you aren't George? We're leaving. You might as well just show yourself right now. Just let stuff go. Go ahead and let it go. Oh, what the hell? Come down. Oh my god. Oh, I'm feeling like... Me too. Again. I'm gonna step over here. So you're saying you are not George? Who are you? What are you? Show yourself, we're not afraid. Okay, so we don't think, honestly, I don't think you're George. Do you? No. Okay. I don't think you're George. George would not be doing all this shit you're to right. freak us out tonight. And if you're picking on Cassie and, and using Cassie, you need to stop. Like, what the f***? Look at this thing. It's literally trying to spook us out before we leave. I know. It's like, you know, it's been silent the whole time. And then it was starting to go off on your... And right when I talk about my tangent, about it f pretending to be George, too. Right. Well, do you want okay. to just shut that thing up and yeah. let's get out of yeah. here? All right, y'all. Like I said, we're going to pack up and leave. Stay tuned, but we're calling it a night tonight.